What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Today it is the Lazy Days channel. And we're back at it again with some more history reaction for you guys today. And we're starting some brand new content for you. And it's History Marche. And it's the Road to Rome 221 to 218 BC. Hannibal Part 1 The Second Punic War. A highly requested video by you guys. We're really looking forward to sort of finding out some more information in regards to this. Obviously, I reacted to the first Punic Wars part one already. You've watched it sort of here and there. Yeah, uh, in seen the it here time. and there, but I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Looking forward to finding out this. We As like always. the Roman culture over here and their history. So if you guys are looking forward to our reactions, then like, comment, subscribe, subscribe. hit that notification bell. But we're just going to jump. So if you haven't already, please head over to his channel. A link will be in the description box down below. But we're just going to jump straight into this one. Let's do this. Okay. After General Hasdrubal the Fair was assassinated by a Celtic slave, 26-year-old oh, yeah, Hannibal was elected. Slave as the new Carthaginian commander. The young general immediately made plans to invade Rome, but he couldn't begin the campaign before strengthening Carthage's control over the Iberian Peninsula. Mm, so Hannibal went to work. He launched two highly successful campaigns in 221 and 220 BC, extending Carthaginian influence beyond the Tagus River. But while on the return route to New Carthage, Hannibal was taken by surprise by a coalition of Iberian tribes. Led by the Carpatani tribe, the Iberians assembled a large army. They blocked okay. Hannibal's path and fortified their position against the Tagus <laughs> River. The <laughs> they waited for the Carthaginian general to attack. I tell you what, so far I'm liking the animation. It's yeah. slightly different than the other one. The little tents on here are quite cool. The added little pop-ups, they're quite nice. Yeah. So, it's, it's good. Yeah. I, like, I like the different animation styles they all use. Yeah. Here, Hannibal showed his military genius for the first time. And just it's quickly, a... even something like that, I haven't men, seen many mention the roads. Yeah. So that's the road to New It's the little detail. First time. Yeah, and the river. Instead of attacking the Iberians head on, he erected his own fortified mm. camp and waited. <laughs> he was supposed to By day's end, his scouts <laughs> found a river crossing to the southeast. <laughs> During the wee hours of the night, Hannibal ordered a small contingent to stay in the camp mm. and keep all the campfires burning, creating the illusion that the whole Carthaginian army was still in camp. Okay. Yeah, very small. Meanwhile, he led his army on a swift flanking maneuver further up the river. <laughs> By sunrise the next day, Hannibal was behind the Iberian position, mm. feigning retreat towards New Carthage. Thinking that the Carthaginians were retreating, Iberians rushed to intercept them. But once they were midstream, Hannibal sprung his trap oh. and unleashed his cavalry. Ooh. Iberian infantrymen, chest deep in the fast flowing river, couldn't offer much resistance and were cut down with ease by the Carthaginian <laughs> cavalry. What, what are you gonna do, bro? What are you gonna do? I can breaststroke. <laughs> yeah, I know, That's I know. all I can do. L yeah. Literally. Bro, the yeah, savagery. No, no, no. And it's, <laughs> it's just right, okay, lads, stay in the camp. We're just gonna swing down the back and we're just gonna, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. keeping your boy, like some people in the camp. And That's a very in. smart idea. Yeah, Keep the fires the burning. So smart. Oh, so mate. smart. And even to make it look like you were retreating and you didn't even want to battle. So yeah. That, so that they would the very in the water. water once they're in the water you're like i got you yeah and then turn around oh, like, mate. wow those who managed to cross were trampled mm. by the elephants so what now by now yeah, the elephants. iberian army lost all cohesion oh. <laughs> got a small contagion of elephants as well, yeah. Fuck yeah, so the Carthaginians are like, um, sort of got like Egypt and North Africa. Right. Um, they The coastal lines of that yeah. sort of area. I would um, not want to see an elephant in war. No, no, no. Especially no. when you like, like, it's probably, Imagine you've only that. heard it in stories, you've never seen it. Like, like I yeah. know what an elephant looks like, not just through TV and through all these other mediums, but from a zoo and, right. like, seeing them in person. So it's, it's put, I've become de, de, de monetized to it. I've seen the it. Elephants that we have, seen it like, the elephants that we have are nothing compared to what the elephants they had. 
They are the same creature, yeah. but these are battle-ready elephants. These are things with like the fat, long tusks and just. What do you mean, fat, long tusks? Like the the tusks and they're like proper out there. <coughs> they're not like uh, the elephant tusks. They go out to a, a decent size, but no, that's about no, no, no. it. No, they, that fucking. Yeah. I've googled this, bruv. Let's Google this now. I'm telling you now. You're being silly. I'm not being silly. Okay. Yeah, they'd have normal tusks. The only thing with it would be that... Um, oh, I thought there was more, like, and they had, like, massive tusks in there, like, proper out there. Oh, mate. <laughs> Are you thinking of... <laughs> oh, elephant swords, also called tusk swords from India, are uh, pairs of blades specially designed to be attached to the elephant's tusks. Yeah, but they're not going to That's go probably what I yeah. thought it was because of the length. <laughs> oh, see, look, everything's got an explanation in this world, man. Google. No. Solid. You was, you was thinking of a, a, a mama kill from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> That's what you were thinking. That's what I was thinking. Would you actually... <laughs> It was them fat elephants with a basket on the top, bro. That's what I was thinking. That's fantasy. That's fa- I need a smoke, man. I've I've not smoked today. Oh, wow. <laughs> Dude, I gave you some. Oh, oh my! That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking oh. them little elephants, bro. Ah, oh. like at a three hundred. Three hundred. That's what I had in my mind. All right. I love you, Jack. I love you, oh. Jack. No, it's an elephant, and yeah, they would have a basket on top, which probably had like three or four people in. Yeah. It, but literally only two to three people, and they might have had like a spear and like some bows. So you probably had like like one like. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm still getting over the movie kill. <laughs> and they probably had like one person. Like I'm keeping this whole bit in. Yeah. By the way. <laughs> oh, I hate you. <laughs> You had one person like who was the rider, and then maybe one or two people to support him with arrows, and maybe try and make sure he don't die. Right, and was oh, that the real man. elephants? Or was that that's the, the real right. elephants? Don't let me kill us Fuck off! Shut up! Just, just play the video, man. <laughs> do you think? Do you think Aragorn's gonna come along and bring the dead army in a minute? Oh, just oh, army lost all cohesion, and the mass of tribal warriors oh. started fleeing. Hannibal ordered his army to pursue them across the river, completely <laughs> routing the enemy. Well, he did a good job on the first one. Off the Tagus that. River, process Hannibal got his first major victory. But uh, Rome I'm a took big shot now, yeah. <laughs> we Wanting noticed. to stop Hannibal's expansion, the Romans made their presence felt. Already allied with the wealthy and powerful city of Saguntum, Rome declared it their protectorate. An act that Hannibal perceived as a violation mm, of the treaty, okay. signed by the two great powers in 225 BC which divided the Iberian Peninsula along the Ebro River into Carthaginian and Roman spheres of okay. influence. Yeah. A sworn enemy of Rome. It didn't take long before Hannibal acted. He marched on Saguntum and besieged the city. Okay. In 219 BC, Carthaginian army reached the outskirts of Saguntum. The city was heavily fortified situated atop steep slopes and cliffs high above the surrounding plain. Saguntines oh, see, requested aid from Rome. So like these are the farmlands and stuff yeah. like that and their agriculture and bits. They've got their and main then, castle on Yeah, you, and this is a hill. That's a this smart idea. A that's, that's a good idea. Yeah. From is Rome, but the Romans were busy fighting the Illyrians. Nevertheless, with provisions stockpiled, Saguntum was well, prepared. Besieging it would not be easy. Hannibal installed a blockade around the entire city and placed most of his force at the western end. Saguntines stubbornly kept pushing every Carthaginian assault back, but the siege went on for months, oh, wow. Wow. and the many assaults gradually wore down portions of the wall. Eventually, the defenders had to abandon their outer defences and form up behind the inner wall. Slowly and relentlessly, Hannibal's army made progress. And after eight brutal months, the Saguntines made their last stand at the eight citadel. Eight months. Eight months. It's not a long siege. Uh, that's Soon a long after, siege. the city I held up for a while, yeah. though. Eight months. Inhabitants that survived the siege were either killed. Imagine being in that yourself. Like, 
like being there and like two months go and so many of your friends and like comrades have died and you've only gotten the first section and you're like we've done all of this just for this little bit and then imagine once the eight months has come by and you finally got in how yeah. relieved you would be that you finally done it and that it also wasn't for nothing and they, anyone survived the siege were either killed or sold into slavery, slavery. oh my yeah oh that sucks man or sold into slavery but to be fair, that was the time back then. Yeah, it everyone was, was sold into slavery. After the fall months. of Saguntum, Rome demanded justice for what they perceived was the violation of the treaty and, claiming that Saguntum was in the Roman sphere of influence, according to the treaty, they asked Carthage to hand over Hannibal to Rome so he can be punished. But the Carthaginian Senate stood by their general. And by the end of the year, the Second Punic War began. Mm. Hannibal wintered in New Carthage. Preparing for the upcoming campaign, he placed his brother, Hasdrubal, in charge of Iberia with 15,000 troops and 21 okay. elephants, along with a fleet of ships to protect the coastline. To break possible tribal allegiances, around 15,000 Iberian infantry were swapped for 15,000 African infantry, who were more reliable, sending the Iberians to Carthage and Libya to bolster defences against a possible Roman landing. Okay. And in the spring of 218 BC, with the full support from the Senate, oh. Hannibal marched out of New Carthage with 54,000 infantry and 8,000 cavalry, dividing his army into three columns. But beyond the Ebro, tribes allied to Rome were hostile to the Carthaginians, okay. and it took Hannibal about two months to pacify the region. He placed around 10,000 troops under the command of Hanno, ordering him to establish a line of defense on the Ebro against possible incursions into Carthaginian that territory. Yeah, yeah. With 38,000 infantry, 7,000 cavalry, oh, and 37 it. elephants left at his disposal, Hannibal crossed the mountains and encamped on the other side of the Pyrenees. Meanwhile, the Romans divided their forces. Their plan was to send Consul Publius Cornelius Scipio to intercept Hannibal in Iberia. Okay. Simultaneously, Consul Tiberius Sempronius Longus sailed to Sicily with the intent of attacking Carthage itself <laughs> if Scipio <laughs> managed to stop Hannibal's advance. Additional Roman forces were left to guard the recently conquered Gallic lands in the Po Valley, a region the Romans called Cisalpine Gaul. This is, this is obviously really early on in the Roman Empire as well. Yeah, we were looking at about 60,000, 58,000 men and cavalry... Uh, 3,000 cavalry. No, more than that. You're looking at what? Two, four with those two. No, so 3,000 three, cavalry. It's four, five oh, 4,000. 5,000. No, 4,000. Four, four, yeah, 4,000 yeah, cavalry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Back at the foot of the Pyrenees Mountains, Hannibal laid the groundwork for the invasion. It's all separated. Rather than yeah. fighting his way towards Rome, he did everything to avoid conflict with the Gallic tribes mostly paying them for free passage through their territory, promising that his only interest is to fight Rome. Moreover, Carthaginian messengers returning from the Po Valley assured Hannibal that the Gallic tribes there would welcome him and that hmm. they already began hostilities against Rome in anticipation of his arrival. Yeah. This was They're welcomed it. news for Hannibal because he knew the Po Valley could provide the manpower and act as a staging point for operations into Roman territory. Okay. Yeah. As Hannibal approached the River Rome, Scipio's army disembarked at Massalia to resupply while on their way to Iberia. The Roman general knew that Hannibal crossed the Pyrenees, but he wrongly estimated that the Carthaginian general was still far from the Rome. In truth, Hannibal's army was only four days' march away from Massalia. Ooh. Hannibal rested his army for three days in hostile territory and began preparations to cross the Rhone. With the Roman army just four days away, Hannibal wanted to avoid a set-piece battle with the Gauls, eager to press on towards the Italian peninsula as soon as possible. But on the opposite riverbank, encamped was the army of the Caveris tribe, a Roman ally. Ah, uh, I see. They yeah, gathered all their boats and built a barrier on the riverbank in preparation to contest the Carthaginian crossing. 
Wait, what? They they use their boats to like block up the river. That's actually quite smart. That's so sick. That's smart. Yeah. Like, oh, I would have cavalry in that, and it should not. Yeah, and if you like, if you've got troops, you're yeah. gonna have to get through the boats and stuff. Oh. Yeah, and like archers as well. If you have any archers, co- like hiding behind it, yeah. that's really smart. That is. But Hannibal devised a cunning plan. On the third night, under the cover of darkness, he sent a flanking detachment under the command of Hanno, son of Bomlikar, some 40 kilometers, 25 miles north. Hanno crossed the river and rested his troops for one day. Mm. On the second night after leaving the Carthaginian camp, Hanno's detachment again moved during the night. Ooh, sneaky. Eventually yeah. deploying behind the Caveras camp at dawn. The trap was set. Early next morning, Hanno used smoke mm. to signal Hannibal to start crossing the road. As the Carthaginian vessels were lowered into the massive river, the Caveras army formed a line on the opposite bank. Hannibal was one of the first to cross. Mm, wow. Strong. To the roars and cheers of his men on the western bank. Oh, As the Carthaginians yeah. started disembarking on the eastern riverbank, Hanno sent a part of his force to loot and destroy the Caveras camp. Mm. While he proceeded to charge at the Gauls near the river. The Caveras were stunned by the flanking maneuver, and they began fleeing the field in panic. Unable to cope with Hannibal's perfectly synchronized attacks. With the Gauls scattered, the battle was soon over, and the Carthaginians hastily proceeded to cross the river. Strong, eh? Strong, yeah. very strong. Yeah. Most of Hannibal's troops crossed he's, the Rhone by the. He's proven to be very um, agile like, and, and yeah. smart with outflanks and stuff yeah. like that. He's using the cover of night to <clears throat> yeah, as well. hide the movement, which yeah. is good. By the end of the day, while it took another day to get the elephants across the river, while the Carthaginian army gathered on the eastern bank, friendly Gallic messengers from the tribes in the Po Valley arrived, warning Hannibal that a Roman fleet is anchored nearby. Mm. Hannibal sent his scouts to locate Scipio's army, and incredibly, not long after, his Numidian scouts stumbled into a Roman Gallic scouting party. <laughs> Could you imagine you're just... You're My just, guy's on his own, <laughs> trying to find out where he's been. And, and you just crossed each other, and then just all of a sudden, like, you're just like, wait, was that... Imagine was just, that, just a little round bend, like a it, roundabout in the middle it. of a field of, like, a grass bird, and these blokes are just going round it, and then they end up going the same way they, they just come from. cross each other. They realise, like, both at the same time, turn around, just go back, and as they pass, just like, you know what, mate? <laughs> That's so oh, funny. Oh, God. Uh, both oh. generals now knew each other's whereabouts. Scipio quickly moved north to confront Hannibal, but by the time the Romans reached the crossing point a few days later, only an empty Carthaginian camp was left behind. Mm, Hannibal had no time to waste. He had to reach the Alps before winter. But as Hannibal's army began their journey over the Alps, trouble was brewing in Iberia. Hey, taking an army through the Alp Mountains. Yeah. Like, and that's a large force he's got there as well. That's a feat. That is. Scipio placed his brother Gnaeus Cornelius Scipio Calvus in charge of leading the army into Iberia, while he headed back to the Po Valley to mm. assume command of the Roman troops there and prepare for the Carthaginian invasion. Scipio Calvus, now in charge of the invasion force, disembarked at Emporiae. The Greek trading cities and the Iberian tribes in the region welcomed the Romans. Okay. But even prior to the arrival of Roman troops, the Carthaginians began to lose control over the conquered region Mm. as Hanno's force was not large enough to conduct offensive operations. Okay. What's worse, Hanno only learned about the Roman arrival and Scipio Calvus was well on his way towards the Ebro River. Oh wow. He sent word to Hasdrubal, who began marching north with 8,000 infantry and 1,000 cavalry. But instead of waiting for Hasdrubal, Hanno marched out with 10,000 troops to meet the 20,000 strong Roman army. 
Unsurprisingly, mm. Scipio Calvus easily crushed the Carthaginians, yeah. killing yeah, 6,000 and capturing 2,000 troops, yeah. along with Hanno himself. Bellend. Once Hasdrubal arrived, he didn't have enough troops to meet the Romans in battle, so he launched fast-moving raids along the coast. Carthaginian. He lost, like... Like, he had started with 9,000, and he got left with 1,000. So when the 8,000 fours come up, they were only at 9,000. That's outrageous. That's fucking... That's a pointless battle. That, yeah, you that just was lost stupid. so much. Your, your ego just got so many men captured oh, and killed for nothing. For absolutely nothing. Oh, mate. Carthaginian raiders killed many Roman sailors as they were foraging, reducing the effectiveness of the Roman fleet by half. Nevertheless, Rome now had full control over Iberia north of the Ebro River, a serious blow to the Carthaginian war effort. Moreover, northern Iberia would become a base of operations for Roman incursions into Carthaginian territory south of the Ebro River. Meanwhile, having marched his forces over the Alps, Hannibal would soon turn the Italian peninsula into a war zone Ooh. in a campaign that would elevate him to a general of legendary status. And I guess we'll find out oh. how that happens oh. in the oh. next so episode. So my guy's just taken like yeah. 37 elephants through the Alps. Through the Alps, bro. Through the Alps oh. and all those men. Like, that's such an amazing feat. And oh. I'm really looking forward to seeing how he does what he does. Definitely. Yeah, episode. man. If you guys are enjoying our reactions, then please like, comment, subscribe. subscribe hit that notification bell. And we will catch you in the next episode. See you in a bit.